So, what's the plan for today, anyway? I'm waiting patiently in the hallway of the girls' dormitory, just outside of Emmy and Rin's rooms. Emmy is apparently helping Rin with getting dressed. I suppose that makes perfect sense. I have no idea how Rin would get dressed otherwise. Picnic! Picnic? That's what I said. Sounds pretty exciting. I know, right? Rin chooses this moment to make an observation. The sky seems threatening today. Actually, I noticed that too on my way over. Despite the sunshine of the early morning, the afternoon seems to have taken a turn for the gloomy. There's a heaviness to the air as well that usually heralds a rainstorm. I wonder if I should have brought my umbrella. She's got a point. Emmy, are you sure that you still want to risk getting caught in the rain? I don't even know why I bothered asking. Emmy pops out of Rin's room in the hallway, looking shocked that I'd even suggest canceling our plans. Of course. What, the threat of rain is supposed to stop me? I can't help but grin at her belligerent response. It's almost like she's daring the rain to come. If Mother Nature were walking down the street, I think Emmy would probably start a fight with her. Or at the least, challenge her to a race. In fact, Emmy seems almost aggressively cheerful today. Rin wanders out into the hallway, looking her usual self. Well then, are we ready to go? I'm ready. Rin nods and says a single word. Basket. Beg pardon? The basket in Emmy's room. You should carry it. Emmy claps a hand to her mouth, embarrassed. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot about it. Nice save, Rin. Emmy darts into her room and emerges with what looks like a very well-stocked picnic basket. As she hands it over to me, I note that it feels heavy enough to be one, too. Good lord, how much food did she pack? More to the point, where'd she get the money for all of this? So, are we set to head out? Yep. Rin gives another nod, and we head out of the dormitory. I can't help but frown when I notice how gray the sky's gotten in the ten minutes that I was inside. Still, Emmy does not seem concerned by such petty concerns as the color of the sky. She's positively skipping as we walk. Which reminds me... Uh, where are we going? This brings Emmy up short and she shoots me an embarrassed look. You know, I hadn't really thought of that. What do you think, Hisao? Well, there's the spot where we ate during the festival, but it might be nice to leave the campus for a while. However, I'm not sure if there's any good places to do that in town. Just as I'm about to open my mouth, Rin unexpectedly interjects with a suggestion. There's a park in town near the art shop. Great idea, Rin. I totally forgot all about that place. Crisis averted. Do you know how to get there, Rin? Rin shrugs. It's pretty likely. Good enough for me. I would prefer knowing for sure, but what the hell. Lead on, Rin. The three of us quickly make our way off campus and we take the road down into town. The basket's a bit heavy. I hope that the park is close by. We pass the art supply store, Rin slowing her pace slightly as we go by. Emmy notices Rin's change of pace and stops. You want to go in, Rin? Rin shrugs. Nothing I need. Are you sure? There's the slightest flutter of a smile on Rin's face, quickly replaced with her usual expression. Life's uncertain, but on this at least, I'm pretty sure. Nice of you to offer. Well, it's not like I'm the one carrying the basket. But I'll bet Hisao wouldn't have minded anyway, right? Oh, of course not. This is hardly a heavy load. I flex for emphasis. Emmy stifles a snort of laughter by pointing to the park at which we've suddenly arrived. Oh, I remember this place. I ran into you here that one time, didn't I, Rin? Rin's eyebrow raises slightly. Maybe. I'm unwilling to say for certain one way or the other. Memory's a tricky thing, you know. Well, I'll be. We made it in one piece after all. The sun's still nowhere to be seen, but neither Emmy nor Rin seem to mind. We find a spot to sit on the grass, and I set the basket down gratefully. 
There's a surprising amount of food prepared. Maybe we're supposed to be joined by some of Emmy's teammates or something? I'm starving. Dig in. She attacks the food as if she's had nothing to eat for years. I'm just reaching for the food myself when I feel the first drop of rain land on the back of my head. Uh-oh. Looks like the weather's not going to cooperate with us after all. Emmy glares at the sky, as if that alone will hold back the rain. I very nearly believed she could do it. It's one heck of a glare. It had better cooperate. You hear me, Sky? You stop raining right this instant. The Sky doesn't seem inclined to listen to her, despite the commanding tone she's taken with it. Instead, the rain seems to increase. Rin wrinkles her nose in distaste at this turn of events. Regrettable. What do you mean? Rin shrugs. I could paint this if I weren't out here. Shame to miss it is all. He doesn't seem angry or annoyed about it, just a little disappointed. Emmy laughs in response to Rin's comments. Guess we should have stopped at that art supply store after all, huh? The rain increases a little more, offended that we haven't fled yet. Despite the warm temperatures we've been enjoying, the rain is rather cold. I wish I'd brought my umbrella. Hey, we should probably head inside to keep dry. We're already pretty wet, he sow. Yeah, but we can dry off this way and maybe wait out the storm. You don't want to catch a cold or anything, do you? Emmy considers this for a moment, and I can tell that part of her wants to stay out in the rain, just despite the weather. Unfortunately for her, the weather hardly cares about what we do. I suppose you're right. I suppose you're right. Where could we go? I don't have an answer for her. The area is still pretty new to me. Though I guess I'm slowly getting used to the school itself, the surrounding town remains a mystery. All I know is the art supply store, and that's only because we've just passed it. Fortunately, Emmy soon snaps her fingers in triumph. That's it. There's a tea shop nearby. We could have some tea and dry out, no problem. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. Great. You know where it is? Emmy nods, looking fairly confident. Sure do. I think. But it'll be an adventure either way, right? Adventure, huh? Well, I suppose we could use a little adventure. I think as long as we get out of the rain, I'll be happy. The picnic basket is a little lighter now, at least. Lead on. Ren and I follow Emmy as she weaves through the streets with something approaching confidence. Now, left here. There, the Shanghai. Emmy beams triumphantly as she points to the tea shop. It seems fairly crowded inside, a symptom of the sudden rain, I'm sure. Yuko? You have two jobs? Or did she quit and this is her new job? Welcome. Can I? I'm surprised to find out that our waitress is none other than Yuko. She looks the part in her uniform. It's hard to believe that this is the same librarian from our school. Does she work two jobs? I guess that must be it. Oh, it's you. Yuko seems to know Emmy. Emmy grins brightly. Pleased to be remembered. Hey, Yuko. Hi, Yuko. I didn't know you worked here, too. Do I know you? You seem awfully familiar, but I don't think I've ever seen you in here. Uh, we met at your other job at the Yamaku Library, remember? Her eyes widen in memory. Memory. Yeah, that's it. Nice to see you again. Oh no, this is bad. I should have remembered a customer's face. I'm sorry, I'm terribly sorry. Yuko goes from realization to panic in a split second, performing a series of high-speed bows. I narrowly avoid getting headbutted in the process. Whoa, hey, calm down. Listen, I wasn't a customer when we first met. In fact, I hadn't ever been to the Shanghai, so it's alright. Not the best display of logic, but it seems to relax her a little. Do you really think so? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Positive. Isn't that right, girls? Emmy has been watching this little drama unfold with considerable amusement. Yep, it sure is. Well, okay. So, Yuko, got room to seat us? Yuko nods and leads us to a corner booth, providing us with some small towels before taking our order. What will you have? Cake, and some tea too, I guess. What kind of cake? Surprise me. Yuko looks uncomfortable at the thought of surprising anyone, but she gives a nod and turns to Rin. And for you? I'll take a straw. My feet are all wet. Sorry? 
the drinking kind of straw. One, please. Yuko is obviously uncertain of what to think about this. She fiddles with her pen and stationery for a moment, looking like she's about to cry or turning in my direction. And you, sir. Just tea, I think. Emmy would probably yell at me if I ordered cake. Oh, come on, he said. Don't let me be the only one with food. I'll feel like a pig. Just trying to eat healthy. Your orders, after all. Well, today's your day off. You could be healthy tomorrow. Well, then, I suppose I will have some cake after all. Yuko seems slightly irritated that I'm changing my mind. What kind? I glance at Emmy and grin. Surprise me. Yuko sighs and nods. Very well, your order will be out soon. Despite the crowd, our order does indeed arrive quickly. Thanks, Yuko. Yuko nods in appreciation. This is a different guy than usual, isn't it? What? Different guy? Emmy must notice my confusion because she seems a little embarrassed. Wh what Oh, yeah, I guess he is. This is my friend, Hisao. We've met. Huh, small world. Well, let me know if you need anything. With that, Yuko takes off like a shot to wait on some other tables, leaving me to ponder her comments. Different guy, huh? I guess it makes sense, right? Emmy's pretty popular, or so I've been told. It's probably that kid from the track team. This is stupid. I can just ask Emmy. So, uh, who's this other guy, huh? You got a secret lover or something? Emmy laughs again, only I get the feeling it's from nervousness as much as anything else. It's just the track team captain. He likes coming down here after practice sometimes. So if we have anything to discuss, I tag along. Hmm. Sounds mighty suspicious to me. Oh, I see. I could let the matter drop, but I can't resist at least getting another dig in. So it is a secret lover. I knew it. Rin watches our play, seeming mildly amused before muttering something that I don't quite catch. Hey, anyway... What? Huh? Rin jerks back from wherever her mind wandered off to. Huh? What did you just say? Huh. No, before that. No idea. Oh well. Okay. I let the matter drop, but I can't help but notice that Emmy seems relieved that Rin interrupted the conversation. Maybe I went a little too far. The conversation dies down for a moment as Emmy and I busy ourselves with cake. Mine is strawberry and surprisingly good. Emmy seems to think so too as she suddenly reaches over with her fork and steals a bit. Thief. Pirate. There's a difference. We're not on water. Well, no, but there's a lot of water outside, so it still works, right? Besides, you can have some of mine. I think it's cranberry or something. I should have asked for the strawberry. I like strawberries. Feel free to help yourself to mine if you really must. For some reason, I feel compelled to add, seeing as how you've already done it once and all. Emmy sticks her tongue out at me, but that doesn't stop her from appropriating my cake. I try some of hers as well. It's raspberry, and pretty good. The rain's let up. It would appear that Rin is correct. Good timing, too. I've finished my food, and it looks like Emmy has as well. Well, we'd better pay and get a move on before it starts raining again. It takes a few minutes to get Yuko's attention, but we pay and get out pretty quickly. So, did you want to return to the park? My jaw nearly drops. Are you kidding? It's probably going to rain again. In fact, I think I just felt some raindrops. Hmm, you may be right. Well, okay, I'll let you off the hook this time, but you owe me a picnic now, got it? I don't know if she's addressing me, Rin, or the both of us. Fine, fine. Now hurry up. I wanted to get some laps in at the track, and it would be nice to do it without the rain. I thought this was your day off. Well, Emmy suddenly seems reluctant to explain herself. I need the practice. And I need to burn off that cake anyway. Why do I get the feeling that she's leaving something out? Are you sure? It wasn't that much cake. No, it wasn't that much cake for you. I ate most of it. She's got a point there. Still, I feel like I should at least offer to run with her. Offer to run with Emmy or keep quiet. Offer to run with her. At this point, I feel like I'm already locked into Emmy's route anyway. I may as well see it through to the end. Hey, I'll run with you. I might as well, right? Emmy shakes her head empathetically. No, you won't, Hisao. Rest is critical for you, remember? 
I won't allow you to push yourself too hard. I guess she's better at giving advice than taking it. Whatever you say, Emmy. I think it's probably best not to press the issue. As we approach the girls' dormitory, it starts to rain again. Emmy's expression sours slightly. Aw, oh, man. Stupid rain. Hey, it'll let up soon enough. You can go running then, right? Emmy snorts, seemingly amused. Like I'm not gonna run in the rain. Well, you shouldn't. You could catch a cold. Emmy waves her hand airily. Ridiculous. I don't get colds. My immune system is far too strong for something like that. I can't help but laugh. Well, I'll see you tomorrow then, okay? Yeah. Thanks for coming. Oh, and for carrying the picnic basket. I'll bring it for lunch tomorrow. We can have our picnic on the roof. Sounds good to me. See you then. Emmy grabs the basket from me and shoots through the door. Rin gives me a sort of half nod and then ambles inside as well. Damn, it's wet out here. I need to get back to my room and into some dry clothes. I'm soon in front of my door, but I am intercepted by the sudden appearance of Kenji, who appears to be carrying a sack of books. Hey man, give me a hand, would you? Huh? The books are unceremoniously dumped into my arms as Kenji fumbles with his room key. Thanks, you're a lifesaver. If you weren't around, I'd have to keep my door unlocked, and that's just begging for trouble. The perfect opportunity to set up an ambush, or maybe just plant a bomb if they don't want to get their hands too dirty. Probably don't. Afraid they'll break a nail or something if they have to stab me. Women. My mind thinks about digesting the verbal torrent that has just been unleashed, but elects to remain comfortably in the dark. Uh-huh. Anyway, where have you been, man? I could have used some help carrying these back from the library. I knocked on your door, but you weren't there. Oh, sorry. Not really. You appear to think I'm some kind of pack mule. I was out with Emmy and Rin. Kenji staggers back in shock. It looks like I just shot his dog, if he had a dog. The limbless ladies again? What'd you do this time? Well, we wound up at the Shanghai. I'm prevented from continuing by a sudden exclamation of despair. The Shanghai! Why the Shanghai? No, 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 no. Man, you can't just go to the damn Shanghai. It's the most dangerous place in the city. A veritable stronghold of their best agents. I know, I've met them. They'll stop at nothing to lull you into a false sense of security, and then bam, he hits the door for emphasis. Well, it's gone. Bus pass, gone. Identity, fucking gone, man. Promise me you won't go there again. He seems so vehemently opposed to the idea of the Shanghai that I'm willing to lie a little in order to get to my room. Sure, I won't go there again. Or at least I won't ever tell you that I've gone there again. This seems to mollify my bespectacled companion. Good, good. Sorry to come on so strong, but I know the danger there too well to let you just wander into the lion's den again. You got out of there alive once, but twice is pushing it. Yeah, well, I need to get changed and, uh, do homework, so I'll see you later. Huh? Oh, sure, whatever. I suddenly remember that I'm still holding his books. You'd better take these. I catch a glimpse of one of the titles. Something about cryptography? What a weirdo. Kenshi grabs his precious cargo from me and disappears through his doorway. I open my own door and walk in, grateful to get out of my soaking wet clothes. The rain outside picks up, and I find myself hoping that Emmy's not out running in this weather. She seems so adamant about doing the run alone, I can't help but wonder if her leg's still bothering her. I try to remember whether or not I've seen her limping at all today, but I can't. Guess I was too caught up in enjoying the day, even if it did rain on us. And as I think back to the events of today, I keep finding myself focusing on my running partner. Her complete refusal to allow the rain to spoil her plans was incredibly cute. But there was something else there, too. Sort of an unflappable attitude when it comes to enjoying the day as it comes. I really like that quality. Maybe I need to do a little of that myself.